If you want to hook up remote start in your interceptor utility, you need to check first that there's a wiring harness right here under the hood, uh, plugged into the little dummy placeholder right there. And this is just a two wire plug and you need to buy one of these to plug in there. This is a interrupter switch from Ford. Dorman has alternatives. They're very inexpensive, so I'd recommend getting it. But in theory, all it is is a two wire hookup. So it just completes the circuit and lets the system know that the hood is open. So pretty much all this does is prevent you from working on your car uh, and somebody comes and uses a remote start and you lose a finger. So I would recommend installing this, but in theory you could just create a jumper from there to there or install a switch that's just a cheap rocker switch that you could enable and disable remote start if you wanted to. But I'd highly recommend going this route. They're so cheap and this one shipped real quickly. I'll put the link um, from Amazon. So all you need to do is fish it in this hole plug it in, pop it in, and that's, that's all it is. Everything else is uh, from Forescan now. The other thing you will need is a key fob that has remote start uh, on the switch. This one is an OEM. I would recommend OEM, but they are expensive, and I've had good luck with uh, like the Chinese aftermarkets. But I've heard a lot of people have bad experience with those, and if you go get those cut, there's no guarantee that the uh, that it's going to work. So, you know, kind of use it at your own risk, but I've always had good luck with aftermarkets. Um, sometimes not as good of range, but good enough for day-to-day -day use, especially when they're sometimes a tenth the cost. So you can pick which one you want to go with, but I happen to have this OEM use key that I will be using. I've actually already programmed this. Go look at my video on how to program these interceptors. Keep in mind that this is a 2013, so 2011 to 2015 should all be the same. From 16 to 19, they might be different. I've never had one uh, in that year range. They are mostly the same, but some things with Forescan might be a little different. The keys might be a little different. I really can't uh, comment on that. It is important to note that you wanna make sure your car is out of dark car mode. <clears throat> so dark car mode will prevent any uh, programming of keys um, so you could, if you want to keep dark car mode, you'd want to take it off and then program your keys and then put it back in dark car mode. And then I believe it'll work, but I don't see any purpose to keep dark car mode on for me. So anyway, everything else we do inside with Forescan. All right. So there's a lot of videos on how to use Forescan, how to get set up. You do need to get one of these cables, uh, and install the software. And there's some free trials you can use. I just pay for one cause I use it all the time. If you have an interceptor, I'd highly recommend getting this really. If you have any Ford vehicles, I'd highly recommend it. Uh, but I'm not going to show you how to do all the setting it up cause there's tons of videos on that. But all you need to know is that I have my OBD2 to USB hooked in. I'm within Wi-Fi, and I need to turn my key on. So I will put it in the start position. I'm not starting the car. I'm just putting it in the start position. Now I'm going to connect. And it's telling me that I have the HS position on, which I do. Right down there, the switch says HS. So just to verify, recap, I clicked on this top one. Came down here to connect. It's doing its little scan. It's recognizing that I've done this before. And it's just doing all of its little checks. And then it, it, right down here it says uh, reading vehicle info. Uh, we need to wait till it says it's finished. It's telling me to switch to MS. I don't even think we're actually gonna be using MS for this, but we're gonna go ahead and do it. Okay, now it says ready down there. And I'm gonna switch it back to HS because I'm pretty sure that's what we're using. So then we're gonna go to this little chip icon and then we need to go to the body control module, which is right here. We're going to go to the as built. Okay. We'll hit play. And now it's going to be reading it. Yeah, if we're set on HS. That's good. And then, okay. So this is something 
that little warning it's going to read you is you should always do backups on these before you uh you should always do backups on these before you start writing anything so right here do you see down here it says save all uh i would recommend clicking this and then saving it i already have mine saved um so i have right here that you know may 2022 and i i already went through and hooked and saved all of my as built so i would do that before you go do all that the may 2022 is just when i backed it up um so anyway that way if you mess something up in here you can just go back and you can load it all back in that's creating your own backup so always do that before you do with Forescan. The other thing I'd recommend doing is that if you're just in Forescan playing around, I would only write one, one maybe two things at a time. Um, so that way, if you do, you know, 15 things and then you mess something up, it, you don't want to be trying to figure out what you messed up. Okay, so we're going to go down to line the 72618 one, okay? And then you're going to want to switch it to this. So I already did mine. But you're going to, you know, 0, 100, 0, 0, 0, 5, 4C. So you just go in and you find which digits are not matching and you change them. Okay. And once you're finished with that, you click right. And then it will say, well, so mine says no changes, but yours is going to have some steps for you. So, because I've already done all this. So you're going to switch that and that's in the body control module. So then we're going to disconnect. Then we're going to go find... We go up to this tab, go back, we're gonna go to the IPC as built. And then it's saying to do backup. Once again, come down here, click save all and save and backup, which I've already done. And then we're going to find 7201103, which is this one. And you want it to read this 800 a 000 b5 okay so whatever your says switch it to that okay and then you would hit uh right and then follow the prompts and then disconnect and then let's see so one other thing you could do too if you just go into uh the non as built sometimes it'll give you the options that you can change the codes without going and changing all the blocks so for example here's dark car uh this is one that i was mentioning before you can just go in here and click disabled so this is kind of a simplified version of what we were just looking at kind of more user friendly and then somewhere in here is going to be the remote start, remote keyless entry is enabled, um, remote start is enabled. Okay, so you can actually just come in here and switch it. But that's, I just showed you how to do it the as built way. But like you could just go in here and do remote start, enabled, cool, right? So that's all you do on that. Uh, and then you can go come in here and just turn on a lot of cool stuff. So I'm not going to mess with any of this, but that's, that's what you would do. The same thing with the IPC. If we go back. And somewhere in here. Okay, so right here, remote start, and then you would turn it to enabled. That's under the IPC. And then remote start climate settings. I'm going to enable that. And then remote start driver's seat. That would be if you had like heated seats, I believe, uh, changing the climate. I don't have that, so. And then rear defrost, I'm gonna enable that for remote start. That means that when remote start is on, it will turn these things on. Um, I don't have the heated steering wheel. Reverse warning chime. I think that's everything related to 
that. You notice right here I have my tire pressure monitor disabled. Uh, right now my wheels are from a different vehicle and they were mounted with new tires on them and I didn't want to have my TPMS light on so I came in here and disabled it. Um, so obviously it's not going to warn me if I get a flat but at least the light won't be on and then when I next time I go change out my tires I'll put the right sensors in and then I'll turn this back on. So, okay, so that's everything that we're going to do. We'll click right. Okay. I'll just do all those, even though I just said not to do more than one or two. Okay, please cycle ignition off and then back on. Okay. Now we should be good. I'm going to disconnect here and then properly disconnect and let's see what we are playing with okay so let's go look at our settings not sure which section it would be under convenience maybe nope okay so now that's all been done on four scan I've got our sensor hooked up. We've got our key ready to go. It's as simple as hitting lock and then twice. And that's it. Hope this helps. Get this done just in time for winter.